I'm Frost and welcome to episode 4 of my beginner's guide for Dual Universe. In this episode we are going to be building our ship to get ourselves into space. Welcome back. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be looking at a ship that is space capable. Uh, we will then take that ship, go up into space. Uh, I will then show you how to maneuver in space and how to get about and more importantly, how to get back down as well. Right, so let's start at the very beginning. Uh, let me come onto my screen here. And I have a ship that I prepared earlier. <laughs> uh, if you were British, then you'd know that when I say this is completely in Blue Peter style. So here's one I made earlier. And uh, this ship essentially is an expanded speeder. So in episode two, we looked at a speeder. So you should be familiar with all the elements for a flying unit. So for example, the adjusters here on the sides, uh, then if I move across, we've got some ailerons. We've got some small ailerons right here. Uh, then we have a couple of wings on the back here. Uh, let me just zoom around. There it is right there. And we do an H on that as well. There we go. So we've got some small, two small wings, two small ailerons. Uh, we then have four uh, stabilizers. So two are to provide uh, balance for the yaw. And then the ones at 45 degree will produce both a little bit of lift and also help with the, with the yaw. Now, realistically, two on the top isn't really that effective because they do produce quite a bit of drag, uh, but it just looked neater, so I did that. But if you want to be super effective, then I would say just put only one at the top. Then uh, you can see right here, I have small uh, atmospheric engines and I have four of them. And those are all the elements uh, pretty much on. Obviously the air brakes on the front here, uh, I've got two on the side here, which are medium air brakes, if I remember. Yeah, medium air brakes. So there you go. And then underneath, there's a, there's a hover engine. In fact, if I just lift it up a little bit, there we go. Let's get it a little bit off the ground. And you can see that I've got a, a medium, I think that's a medium, yeah, a medium hover engine on the bottom. So those are kind of all of the flying elements. So now what we need to look at is, is the stuff that we need to be able to get into space. So first up, we need some engines. And on the back here, uh, you've got these orange cylinders, and those are my small space engines. Uh, we then also have uh, some retro brakes. So instead of atmospheric brakes, we have these things down here, uh, which, as you can see, there's kind of, let me just jump on the wing. There we go, you get a better view of it there. Whoops, let me try again. <laughs> there we go, right there, I'm on the wing. So there we go, so that's a retro brake right in front of us. Uh, that's a small retro brake and it does exactly the same job as the atmospheric brakes, but in space. And then what we're gonna need is we're gonna need to have a fuel tank. So we normally have on the uh, speeder, on the, the atmospheric ships, the blue tank here, which is our nitron tank. But now what we need is we need a separate tank, which is right here, which is a space fuel tank. Now the space fuel tank uses different kind of fuel. So you use nitron for the atmospheric fuel, and we use kurgon for the space fuel. So the uh, Kurgon fuel, if we go into uh, here and I just type in Kurgon, you'll see that we have four different types. Uh, so you've got Kurgon X1, X2, X3 and X4. Now all of these fuels do exactly the same thing. The difference is, is they're made with different uncommon materials. So Kurgon 1 uses sodium, Kurgon 2 uses calcium, Kurgon 3 uses chromium and Kurgon 4 uses copper. The idea why we have four different fuels is this way you never ever get stranded on a planet. Not all planets have the same uncommon minerals uh, and ores, and so therefore you will always find the ore that you need on one of the planets to be able to get off again. The one thing you should be aware of though, is you cannot mix these fuels. If you've started to put Kogon X4 fuel in your tank, then you need to continue putting that into your tank. Either that or you need to empty it and replace it with a different fuel. And these fuels are made in chemical industry, medium uh, industrial unit. And you can see it uses oxygen, hydrogen, and then in this case, copper. So there you go, so that's your fuel, all very straightforward. And uh, if I just check and do a six, uh, I should be full. Yep, so 100% fuel there, so 400 out of 400. And then my nitron, I've got 92%. In fact, I've probably got some spare fuel. Let me just check to see. Yeah, let me just uh, change my leaked container. There we go, and let's have a look. That's it, okay, that's all full. So we're good to go. And you've now seen all the various elements. So to, once again, just to recap, I have two small engines, 
I had four um, retro brakes. I had one on the top, two on the side, and one on the bottom. They work like the atmospheric brakes, that the moment you just keep them uncovered, doesn't kind of matter what angle they're at, just the moment you just keep the, the area around them uh, pretty clear. So what we're gonna do is before we take off, uh, I'm gonna give you some tips. We need to make sure in your inventory that you have some scraps because there is a good chance that you will damage your ship on the way back, especially on your first time. So you always wanna travel with some scraps. I travel with copper rather than uh, the T1 materials uh, like iron and so forth because uh, they, they repair ship the, the parts much, much better and much faster. Obviously you need some nitron fuel as well because the chances are when you come back down to the planet, you, when you first do it, you don't always kind of land where you want to and you may have quite a bit of traveling to do. And then also you really should take some space fuel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm uh, gonna go and grab some space fuel from uh, my, uh, my base down here. Uh, I think there's some that I prepared earlier. Uh, it should be in this container right here. Uh, there we go, I've got 220 that'll do. So we'll grab that and then what I'll do is I'll make my way back up to the ship, uh, jump in the ship and then we will go flying and I will show you the technique to get into space. Right, just before we take off, actually there's a couple more things that I want to cover. Uh, first of all, if we go into build mode and we then um, hit the tab key, in your build helper up here, it actually turns around in a space flight engineer and says insufficient space low altitude lift. Now for this kind of ship, that is normal. And the reason why is if we look at low altitude lift, we're not using vertical boosters and we're not using rocket engines. The space engines don't work in atmosphere. So it's normally vertical boosters and rockets can get you up into space, but we're gonna use a different method. We're gonna fly into space. So the idea is, is that we're gonna use our wings and our atmospheric thrusters to build up enough velocity to create enough lift to lift us up in that transition period between our atmospheric engines working and our space engines kicking in. Now, if you remember from episode two, if you watched episode two, uh, where we covered the flyer, uh, one of the things to be aware of is your angle of ascent. So if we go and look at our wings, you remember from the previous time, so if we go to wing, which no plural, if we go to a wing and uh, we do an inspect element on that, uh, you'll see that its uh, stall angle is 55 degrees. So if you go above 55 degrees, then your wings no longer produce any lift. But your ailerons, uh, which actually produce more lift, uh, have a much shallower angle. So if we do an inspect element on that as well, you'll see it's only 30 degrees. And I need to bring this to your attention now because that's gonna become very important when we try and get up into space. The other thing that I wanna cover very quickly as well is if I do an, let's see, come out of the build mode, there we go. If I do an F2, uh, it's pilot, piloting skills. Now there's some skills that you really want to get uh, before you kind of do this first trip. And the biggest one, is atmospheric engine thrust control, which gives you 5% max thrust. If you can, get this up at least to level three. This is gonna help you on your journey. Then uh, other items that you wanna look at is your ailerons. So uh, I believe it's airfoil optimization. So you get plus 10% airfoil speed to force ratio. So the faster you go, the more lift you create. And a plus 20% boost is pretty good and it's pretty easy to get. It's only like a few hours training at most. Uh, then after that you have atmospheric flight technician and in here uh, you have, uh, which one is it that I'm looking for, yeah, atmospheric element handling. Gives you plus 2% thrust, atmospheric engines, hover engines and airfoils. So you're getting both a boost to your lift and also to your thrust of your engines. And you can get this to at least level 2. Now most of the others uh, require that you have atmospheric thrust control level 4. So for example, uh, if you look at um, atmospheric engine handling, you get plus 10% max thrust when put down, which is a great skill, uh, but you need atmospheric engine thrust control level four. And, but you don't actually need it for your first journey, but it's something that you may want to bear in mind if you're taking a lot of trips up into space. Right, so that pretty much covers the most important elements uh, in here. And then the last thing that I'm going to mention is your inventory have it as empty as possible because your first trip, you know, you, you're gonna struggle getting up into space and the more weight you have, the harder it's gonna be. So literally just take enough spare fuel, a few scraps and that's it. And that should be good then to keep your weight down as much as possible. All right, so I'm gonna jump into this and uh, we're gonna start get ourselves underway. So uh, I will catch up with you once I've got a little bit of altitude. 
Uh, essentially, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm literally just going to take off and we're going to head off, heading up. So let me just uh, boost up my speed. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to climb. And whilst I'm busy climbing, actually, I can actually tell you, uh, you can go quite steep when we're starting. There we go. Let's just take it back a little bit. There we go. So we're busy climbing. Uh, if you're taking off from Alioth, uh, we're going to need to reach 3,400 meters before our space engines kick in. And I made a note of it because I always forget. And Sanctuary Moon, you have to get to 4,250 meters in order for your space engines to kick in. So those are two figures you need to remember. 3,400 for Alioth, 4,250 for Sanctuary. Okay, so we're busy climbing quite happily here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit insert and we're going to go to third person view. And the reason why we want to go to third person view is because we want to be able to see from the side because we're going to be able to, we're going to have to basically make sure that our angle of ascent isn't too steep. And this is the only way you can do it. You don't actually get any information from uh, your, in, your, your instruments to tell you what angle you're actually increasing at. So you can see I'm building up nicely now. I'm at 2,100 meters and my engines are still running at full thrust. So you can see my atmosphere thrust is at 83 kilonewtons and my space thrust is at zero. Once, so I'm on only off at the moment. So once we reach 3,400, you will then start to see the space thrusters start to kick in and then slowly your atmospheric thrusters are going to come down. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run along and what I'll do is I'll catch up with you when I get to 3,400 so we can just skip forwards and, uh, and we'll take it from there. Okay, so we're at 3,100 meters and as you can see my, my, my lift is going down all the time. So what I need to do is I need to flatten off a little bit because as you're flying forwards the planet is falling away from you and so you naturally end up constantly pushing your nose up. So you need to be aware of this, and as you can see, unfortunately it's quite dark because it's unfortunately the middle of the night. So I need to just keep flattening off and make sure that that fig figure is still growing, that my meters are constantly going up. So you can see I'm at 3258, 3260, etc. And so I just need to keep that, and you need to take your time, you don't need to rush it. Just make sure that you're constantly creating that lift, and eventually you will reach that 3400 figure and then you will see your spade thrusters come in. So you can see again, once again, my nose is starting to pitch up a little bit. So I'm just gonna knock it down again a tiny bit and make sure that we keep going up. So you can see I'm just crawling up at the moment. So I'm gonna try and go the other way. There we go, that's it. So that's climbing again. So I've found just the right angle in order to be able to create that lift. And you can see my atmospheric thrust is dropping drastically. It was in the 80s, it's now at 39 because of the altitude that we're at. But we're now about to hit that 3,400 figure right now. And so now, and literally in the next uh, few meters, we should see the space thrusters start to kick in. And uh, let me just double check. Yeah, 3,400. I'll catch up with you as soon as they do. There we go. All right, so it was 3,425. And you can see I can now got three kilonewtons, four kilonewtons of space thrust. So the moment I can keep climbing, even if it's just like a couple of meters per second, that is enough to be able to allow the space thrusters to engage. And now you can see they're really starting to pick up. And now I get up 16 kilonewtons, we've got 35 kilonewtons of atmosphere thrust. So we now have more thrust than we had when we were at 3,400 meters. And you will now see that our altitude is starting to pick up a lot faster. So now the space thrusters are taking over. So we're just going to maintain this angle and we're eventually going to reach the point where our space thrusters are running completely and our atmospheric thrusters are then turned off. And then we are officially in space. We're almost there. So we've got 15 kilonewtons left of atmosphere thrust to go. And in fact, I can actually point my nose up a little bit more now. As we are basically, we're now relying on space thrust, we're not relying on our wings to pull us up anymore. And here we go, so we're heading off into space. Yeah, all looking good. And then what's going to happen, once we get into space, the thing you're going to find is that unlike when you're traveling on the planet where your speed was very much limited, you generally couldn't go much over a thousand kilometers per hour, otherwise you'd start to burn up. We don't have this problem in space. 
we're just going to keep accelerating. Now, one of the things that's going to become very, very important, now you can see that we've got this kind of like light speed effect. And this means now that we're, we're basically in space. And you'll see that they're kind of going at a very different angle than my ship, because now we're in complete zero G physics. So we're going to hit the X key uh, twice. There we go, three times, no, twice, is, twice will do, there we go. And you can actually see the green line is the trajectory of my ship. So um, what's happening is that we've got more forward momentum than actual lift. So if I point my nose right up, you will then see eventually, slowly but surely, in fact, if I can get a good angle on this, that the green line is gonna start to slowly move up as I point my nose up more, because now, we're no longer producing as much vertical, the horizontal thrust, we're now producing vertical thrust. And you haven't got big engines, and so this will take a while, but eventually you will start to change angle. In fact, what we do is we go even more radical, and we can go right up to a perpendicular motion, and then that should start moving, moving our line up much, much more. So we'll stay patient with that. Uh, we're still building up speed. Well, in fact, we're actually losing speed now because I'm a little bit too perpendicular. So we need to get a little bit further away from the planet. There we go. So we're going to maintain our speed. Just keep building up our speed. But you can just about see on, on the screen right now, that green line is starting to move up. So I'm starting to generate enough thrust to change my direction. And what we're going to do is I'm going to head off towards uh, Sanctuary. So Sanctuary, let me just uh, bring up my map. And we'll go to Constructs and uh, we'll pick uh, First Home, which is my home on Sanctuary. We'll set that as a destination. And you can see, there we go, there's Sanctuary over there. So what I can do is, uh, now that I'm well away from the planet, I can just put my, my brakes on. So your brakes work in exactly the same way as they do when you're um, in um, the atmosphere. So we're gonna take off all our thrust, just hit Control, and you'll see the brakes start to take effect. My speed's gonna drop down. And what we're going to do is we're going to line ourselves up for Sanctuary to be able to make the trip to Sanctuary. So it's going to take a, about a minute or so to, from the speed to drop. Uh, even though I've got four of these uh, retro brakes, it does take a while to slow down. And this is something that's going to be very, very important in a little while. So I'll catch up with you once we're at zero. All right, so uh, I'm just reorienting my ship now so that we're pointing in the general right direction. There we go. And what you want to do is you always want to make sure you miss the planet a little bit. So we're just going to head a little bit to the side and then we're going to re-engage our thrusters. You're going to see my green line now just spinning round. Let me just make sure that I'm definitely on the right screen. There we go. All right, so you can see now the line is moving in and that we're basically seeing that we're now going to be heading off in the right direction. And what we want to do is we want to make sure, like I said, that we slightly miss the planet. The reason why is because you're going to keep on accelerating. And if you want to travel like eight SUs, it's going to take you a little while. So you want to get up to sort of five, 6,000 kilometers per hour at least in order to be able to get there quite quickly. And the thing that you saw earlier is that retro brakes aren't that efficient when you're going fast. And so you want to make sure that you miss the planet and you come in afterwards because if you aim straight at the planet if you do not break soon enough you will burn up in the atmosphere you will come in way too fast you won't be able to slow down and so if you miss the planet slightly you'll overshoot then you can always just turn around and poodle back to make sure that you come into the atmosphere at a decent speed so as you can see i'm now building up some speed nicely my, uh, my line is a little bit off so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to adjust myself so i'm pulling away from the planet a little bit more there we go, I can see my line slowly but surely moving. And I want it so that I'm heading gently towards Sanctuary but not actually hitting Sanctuary. And then what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm just gonna fly there, it's gonna take a little while. As you can see, it's still going down quite slowly, we're at 7.94. Once I get above like 10,000 kilometers per hour, then obviously it will start speeding up a lot more. So we'll catch up with you in a minute once we're a lot closer to Sanctuary. Okay, so I'm well underway now. You can see that I'm doing over 10,000 kilometers per hour. Uh, my distance now is coming down at a much, much faster rate. You can see I'm still slightly angled. I was busy moving my green line to get just past Sanctuary. So I think that's pretty much spot on now. So now I'm gonna straighten up my ship 
and just head in a perfect straight line. And then when I get close to sanctuary, so I'm thinking once I'm probably about two SU out, maybe two and a half SU out, that's when I'm going to start putting my brakes on. So I will catch up with you at that point. Okay, we're now three SU out. You can see I'm now going almost 18,000 kilometers per hour and I'm going very, very fast. You can see my figure is going down very quickly now. And so, and we need to start thinking about braking. So I need to take off my speed completely. So I'm now holding that speed of 18,000. I'm not accelerating anymore. And now I'm at two and a half. I'm gonna start hitting my control key. And you're gonna see, it's gonna take a while, even with these four space brakes, to be able to slow down. And this is why, as I mentioned, you really want to make sure that you kind of just slightly miss the planet. Now, as you can see from the rate of slowing down, it's going to take a little while. So I will catch up with you once we get to about 2,000 kilometers and we'll see exactly where I am in regards to the planet. Right, so I'm at 7,000 kilometers per hour, but if you can see, I'm actually now going past the planet. So if I'd aimed straight for the planet, I would have crashed into the planet at 7,000 kilometers per hour. So there is a perfect example of uh, making sure you give yourself enough space. And uh, in my case, this is uh, very much the case. So I'm now at 5,000 kilometers per hour. Okay, so I'm kind of almost there. And what I'm gonna start doing is I'm probably gonna start aligning myself. So I'm still holding down my brake key. I'm just kind of lining myself up a little bit more as we're gonna to want to head off in this general direction in a second. So we're going to land just kind of as dawn is breaking. There we go. So at 3,000, once we get to about 2,000, then we're in a position where we can start burning in another direction. In fact, what we could do is we could turn our engines on now and we can actually use our engines to slow ourselves down a little bit. So if we turn back, there we go and hit the control key, we should slow down very, very quickly. There we go. Okay, much better. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to almost to a complete stop. So we want to try and avoid our sort of sideways travel. So there we go, my, my uh, arrow is now moving round. And we're almost stopped. And all that's gonna allow us to do now is to do a smooth entry back into or into uh, atmosphere. So we're gonna line up. And I prefer to actually fly in visually, so like this, so I can see where I'm going. And I can see the line clearly in front of me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on some forward thrust. In fact, what we do is we're going to put our space brakes on and make sure we've got no more lateral thrust. So we're going to slow right down, make sure we're perfectly still. There we go. Now you see the line is moving down because we're actually being pulled down by gravity. So we're going to go in and we're going to go on just a single throttle. So 25% throttle should be enough as we're going to naturally accelerate as we come down to the planet. Now, your instinct would be to come in kind of flat, like, like a space shuttle. But in dual universe, this is not something you want to do. The reason why, if you do that, you'll end up going into a flat spin and you will not be able to pull out. What you need to do is you need to come into the atmosphere uh, with your wings being able to grab the wind as they come in. So your aerodynamics kick in. And you want to keep your speed uh, around a thousand kilometers. You don't want to go much higher than that. So if you start going creeping up like we are now, then what you can do is you can just hit your space brakes, just hit your control key, just bring the speed down a little bit, there we go, and then go again. And now you'll see that we're heading downwards at a quite a steep trajectory, that's fine because we're going to want our wings to be able to catch. So once again I'm going to hit the space brakes and I'm going to keep my finger on the brake, uh, so just to keep my speed controlled and we're going to point the nose down so that once we actually get into the atmosphere, we're gonna boost up our engines and we're gonna then fly out. And the moment we keep the speed down, then we won't burn up. If you go way above a thousand kilometers, you will burn up. So now we're just doing a nice smooth entry. You can see we're now 4,000 meters. So we're now entering the atmosphere. You can see, you'll see the atmospheric thrusters have now kicked in. And I'm gonna push up my throttle. And there we go, we are now in the atmosphere without any issues, without any burning up of any kind. And there you go. So that is how you get into space, how you travel in space and how you get back down to a planet. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, please give me a like. You can dislike too, that's fine. Don't forget to follow and subscribe. Hit the bell icon if you want to receive notifications. And that's it for this episode. All right, happy flying.